Hello there, ladies and gents. I'm Ezra from Idiot Sports Talk, joined by David from Wake Up It's Football. And with our powers combined, we give you Red Zone Blitz. And the first topic, we got to talk about the abomination last night with by Philip Rivers. And it brought up an interesting question, David. Tony Romo, Philip Rivers, they blow up in big games. But who would you rather have? That's a great question because I honestly don't know who I'd rather have. I'd almost want to go grab a quarter, flip it, and... That's who I would pick, but, I mean, if I truly had to pick somebody, I think I would go with Tony Romo. Um, I just, I don't know, he's got, a, you know, a little bit more experience in the league. Phillips, I liked him up until last year. He's just kind of been stumbling uh, ever since, you know, last year's season, this season as well. Uh, just, I don't know what it is. And I like the Dallas Cowboys uh, as a team overall more than I do with the Chargers, so I just, I'd pick with Romo, but either one, I don't, I don't care. Same here. I think it's pretty tough, and there's no argument here. They've both been surrounded with great talent, but I think Philip Rivers has been the more emotional guy throughout the years, and I think it blows up in his face, and I, I just never really see him come up big in big games, but you can say the same thing about Tony Romo, but I like his ability to make plays with his legs also, and he's been in a tougher division for the last couple years, and on the other hand, Rivers has been given an easy division, he still struggles to win that division and games. And it's mind-boggling with all the talent that he has. But I'm going with Tony Romo because of his legs and experience against tougher teams. So the Eagles uh, made news today, made headlines. They fired their defensive coordinator, Juan Castillo. Ezra, what, what are your thoughts on this move? Uh, my thoughts are they made this move to mask the real problem, which is the offensive end, and that falls on Andy Reid, to be honest. The Eagles, I thought their defense has been on the bright side because their defense has been on the field way too much. They're not running the ball a whole lot. Michael Vick is turning the ball over a million times, and I know there was a controversy this man was an offensive lineman turn defensive coordinator, but the Eagles are only giving up 20 points a game considering all the problems they have on offense. I thought... It was just a move to mask this three and three season and bad offense. Yeah, I mean, I thought, I mean, I was really shocked that they fired the defensive coordinator, not the offensive coordinator, uh, Marty Morningwig. Marty Morningwig does not run the ball. He does not run LaShawn McCoy. There was a statistic on ESPN. Vic throws for 40 more attempts. They lose. They lose most of their games. Uh, LaShawn McCoy rushes for 20 or uh, less attempts. Eagles will lose most of the game. That tells you they need to run the ball. And Marty's not calling those plays. He's, he's just, they're not running the ball. That's exactly what they need to be doing. They're not doing it. I'm surprised they went um, and fired their defensive coordinator. I thought they should have fired their offensive coordinator. Um, too many turnovers as well on the um, on the Eagles' part this season on the offense. Uh, I think that offense is more of a mess than defense. Um, speaking about defenses we got one of the best we're about to talk about in the Arizona Cardinals but they've been hit with a couple injuries and they last last they lost their last two games are they pretenders or contenders David um, well right now I think they're pretenders uh, everybody wants to hype up those teams that start out 2-3-0 or 2-0 no, 3-0 no, 4-0 no. at the beginning of the year I'm the type of guy who's like you know calm down there for a second because we still got you know 12 games or so left to go so you know now the Cardinals are 4-2 Everyone wants to hype the defense up, but how are you going to hype a defense up that has an offense that can't score? Their offensive line has been giving up the most sacks uh, in the league so far. Uh, their, their running backs are depleted. Uh, their quarterback is hurt. They're starting, well, I don't know, I mean, Skelton and Cobb, you know, interchangeably. But uh, now Skelton's going to be the starter. He's been banged up. Really, the only offensive playmaker on that team is Fitzgerald. I don't see them putting up too many points uh, from, from here on out. Um, Cardinals, you said about defense, they're only giving up 16.2 per game. I think it's a legit defense. They've been doing a great job on that side of the ball. Like you said, offensive side, injuries. Oh, man, they're down to their third string quarter. I mean, running back now, William Powell, never heard of the man. I don't know where college he's from, etc., etc. He's talking about giving up sacks. They've given up 23 sacks the last three weeks. Kevin Cobb, okay, he hasn't been consistent this year, but he has come up big in big moments. And now with his injury, he's out for six weeks. It's very significant to this offensive challenge team. Before this injury, I still would have went with contenders. But now with all these injuries to the running backs, the offensive line is shot, and Cobb is out now for six weeks, I'm going to go with pretenders now. 
Uh, and it's tough. Yeah, that's unfortunate. Uh, matchup of the week, we got the Baltimore Ravens headed to Houston to, to match up against the Texans. Ezra, who do you got in this one? Um, It's a playoff rematch from the divisional game last year. I thought if Schaub was healthy last year, they would have won that game because their offensive line was fantastic and is still great this year. And what's not great is the Ravens' rush defense. They're giving up 136 yards on the ground, and that was with – Ray Lewis and Webb, and now they're both gone for the rest of the year and possibly Ray Lewis's career. I think that offensive line, Foster, arguably the best running back in the game, will get going to set up that great play-action offense. I think they're going to get revenge. I think Texans will win this game. And J.J. Watt, let's be serious. <laughs> I, I'm going to pick the Texans, too. Um, you mentioned the uh, the... I don't know how you want to say it. The defense uh, for the Ravens, they cannot stop the run. And you're going into Houston, uh, who, and you're going to be going up against one of the best running backs in the league in Arian Foster. The guy not only is a threat on the ground, but he can go out and uh, catch balls too. So, I mean, I think this is going to be a huge game for Arian Foster. Quite arguably 100-plus uh, yards rushing on the ground, couple touchdowns, and, and like you mentioned, I mean, I, I like the offense that they have in Houston. They, they can set up the play action with uh, Andre Johnson. I think this will be a win for the Houston Texans. I think before we get off this, I want to say Smith for the Ravens and Flacco can be the X factors in that game. If they want. I think the Packers set some of a blueprint to beat the Texans, but that's just me. This has been... Red Zone Blitz. I'm Ezra from Idiot Sports Talk. That is the new partner of SB Nation. Wake up, it's football. David, thank you for having me on. No. Subscribers, loyal supporters, thank you so much. See you guys next week. Take it easy. Take it easy.